Welcome to part two of our screencast, and today we're going to verify that two functions are inverses of each other. Just to review, we have learned how to find symbolically the inverse of a function. If you remember, first we had to check to see if the function is one to one. Then we needed to solve for x. We needed to interchange the x and y values, replace the y with the inverse notation, and finally, we need to verify that the two functions are inverses. It's really important that we check to see if this is true. And there is a way of doing that. And that is uh, written right down here. To verify that two functions are inverses, both composition of functions laid out below must be true. It must be true that the composition of f and the inverse is equal to x and the composition that the inverse and f uh, are also, is also equal to x. If you remember, inverses undo each other. So it would only make sense that when you do the composition of a function that's inverse, you get x. If both of these are, are, are true, you know for a fact that these two functions are inverses. So let's do a problem. <clears throat> The problem that we're going to do is to verify that function f here and g are inverses. We'll make it a little bit larger. And our original function is f of x equals x plus 1 over 3. And we're going to verify that this function f of x and this function g of x are actually inverses of each other. Um, we're going to give you a problem to do on your own uh, as we're doing this problem. So periodically, we'll stop the screencast and ask you to do the next step. The problem that we're going to give you is this one. So what I want you to do right now is to write down these two functions on a piece of paper. Write down f of x equals x minus 2 over 4. And write down g of x equals 4x plus 2. And then periodically, we'll stop and ask you to do the next few steps in order to verify that these two functions are inverses of each other. So please pause right now and write these two functions down. OK, we assume that you've written them down. Let's go back to our problem. And let's start. So if you remember, our first step is we need to see if it is true that f circle the inverse uh, I should not write as f minus 1 because in our case it is g of x is equal to x that's what we would like to be true so let's see if that's true we know that this means f of g of x, g of x being what we hope is the inverse of f of x. And the rule for g of x is 3x minus 1. And we could see that right up above here, that this 3x minus 1, we simply substitute in the parentheses for g of x. That's the first step. I want, I'd like you to pause your, the screencast right now, go to your problem, and just get to this point. Please pause. Okay, so now let's go back to our problem. Let's continue. So now we have f of 3x minus 1, and our rule for f of x, if we just look right above here, is to take whatever's in parentheses, add 1, and divide by 3. So we take what's in parentheses, and this, so we have x, f of 3x minus 1. And the rule that we have learned is take whatever is in parentheses, and add 1, divide by 3, because that's what the rule for f of x says. So we take what's in parentheses. And we say, OK, we have 3x minus 1. Now, according to the rule for f of x, we add 1. And then we divide by 
3. Notice that's exactly what, just circling this above here again, f of x. Notice that's exactly what the rule says. It says take x, add 1, and divide by 3. So it's actually take whatever's in parentheses, add 1, and divide by 3, and that's what we did. We can certainly simplify this. So in the numerator, we get 3x minus 1 plus 1 over 3. A minus 1 plus 1 is 0. So we get 3x over 3. The 3s cancel out, and lo and behold, we get x, which is what we actually had hoped for. So it does seem to be true that we have um, uh, that f circle g of x gets us x, which means that these two functions have undone each other, which is exactly what we want inverses to do. So what I'm going to do right now is I want you to pause once again, pause the screencast, go back to your original problem, and finish these final steps and see if you also get x. So take a look at what I've done, pause, and let's see what happens. Okay, hopefully you completed that, and hopefully you got X. If you did not, you might want to review the beginning of this screencast to see what you did wrong. Um, now let's go on to the second step here. And if you remember our second step, let's draw a little line across here. We want to find G circle F of X and verify that that also will be equal to X. So once again, if you remember, this means g of f of x. And the rule for f of x is x plus 1 over 3. So we get g of x plus 1 over 3. And now we have to remember what the rule for g of x is. And to make it a little bit easier, I just, as you can see, uh, put the original functions f of x and g of x uh, so where you can see them. And the rule for g of x says multiply uh, the what's in parentheses by 3. Notice that that's over here. And then subtract 1. So it's saying take whatever is in parentheses, which is x plus 1 over 3, multiply it by 3. and then subtract 1. So let's put that down here and let's see what happens. We have 3 times x plus 1 over 3 minus 1. And you might notice that the 3's cancel out. That makes life not very easy. <coughs> and that gives us x plus 1 minus 1. And 1 minus 1 is 0. And look what we get. We get x. So notice in both problems, in the one above and the one below, we get x. That means the first function, the original function, uh, uh, the composition, the original function with, its, with the inverse gives us x. They undid each other. And then the composition of the inverse with its, the original function also undo each other, and you get x. We have now verified that these two functions are inverses of each other, and we are done. Now, what we want you to do is go back to your original function, finish this up, see if you also get x when you do g circle f of x. If you do get x, you are done, and you've done it correctly. If you did it wrong, just come back here, review all of our steps, and see where you went wrong. Thank you. And have a good day.